So, We Happy Few comes out in a few days on Early Access on Steam, and I've been pretty excited for this game, but I looked at it and I saw the release date was so close, and I thought to myself, what actually is this game? What's going on guys, my name is Ingenious Clown, and let's talk a little bit about We Happy Few. So I did a little bit of digging, and I realized when I saw one of the trailers that I always thought that this was a story-based experience. Something along the lines of Bioshock or Half-Life 2 or something like that. But let me tell you, it is not that. Now that's not to say that We Happy Few won't actually have a story of any kind. In fact, it does, but unfortunately we won't be getting that in the Early Access version. From what I've heard, they're holding that back until the 1.0 version, which I think is actually a pretty good decision, all things considered. It gives people a reason to come back after Early Access and after the game is actually fully completed. However, I'm still excited for the game in spite of it not having a story when we get our hands on it. But again, back to the point of this video, what exactly is We Happy Few? Well, I guess it can be best described as a first-person roguelite, but in a very... a very strange setting. See, you are a character who decided not to take his happy pills, and your goal is to escape the city. Now the problem with not taking your happy pills is that you become a downer. And when you're a downer, you kind of stick out like a sore thumb. So as you walk around, what you need to do is you need to blend in, you need to... You need to say hi to people, you need to not act like somebody who's not taking their drugs. Because if you act like somebody who's not taking their drugs, chances are, the people that are taking their drugs will be ever so happy to beat the ever-loving shit out of you. And that's not something that you really want. This is a survival game after all. I mean, it's a roguelite game, but it also has all these survival elements. It's, it's not a roguelite that you typically are used to. It's not something like The Binding of Isaac, where you're in a top-down, action-oriented, uh, bullet hell, shoot 'em up style of game. No, 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 no. This is more like you're going around in Ark, and if you die, you gotta start over from the beginning. And to me, that's a very, very interesting combination. It's not something that you see in a permadeath game that often. I mean, you can play Minecraft Hardcore, you can play, like, Rust, and get your shit kicked in by some dude who snipes you from across the map or something like that, and see penises everywhere. I mean, that's kind of what Rust is, right? I don't know, I've never played it. <laughs> but this is a new blend of genres that I, as a fan of roguelites, haven't really experienced. Now, I can't exactly say that I'm a huge fan of survival games, but I like the idea of them and I've enjoyed them from time to time myself. So, to jump into a game like this that has this nice blend of two genres that you don't see mixed together very often, well, I guess... I guess Don't Starve did that first. Now that I think about it, Don't Starve is a roguelite that actually blends in the survival mechanics. But at the same time, the fact that it's a top-down experience and you're not in first person absorbing yourself into the world, it's different. When you're in the mind of the character that's inside these survival games, things can get a quite a bit more tense. Like when you're playing Don't Starve, for instance, and you're, and you're walking around and you see a little character from the top down, you can see anybody coming from behind you, you can see anybody coming from in front of you, you know, as long as you have the light, the radius, the light radius of that game, you can see what's coming. And of course, I mean, if you have the situational awareness in a first person game, you can see what's coming around you too, but there's a chance that you can turn around and see somebody you weren't expecting. Because your view line, your eyesight, is so much more limited than looking at a bird's eye view top down at some dude just wandering around doing exactly what you tell him to. You get more immersed in the situation, you get more immersed in the story and the game, in the emergent story that you inevitably build in these games. It's like, I need to come over here and I'm gonna... Oh, hi sir. Hi, sir, how are you? The weather's so lovely today. I'm gonna walk away now because he's a creepy motherfucker and I don't want anything to do with him. Anyway, so back to the topic at hand. Yes, it is a survival game, which means, yes, you will be wandering around collecting materials, trying to craft things to help you survive, drinking water, eating food, and occasionally taking a happy pill to make sure that people don't know that you're actually a downer. And when you combine that with the incredible aesthetic of this game that really kind of brings me back into that 
Bioshock world. Even though it's nothing to do with Bioshock, it still kind of brings me into that world with its highly stylized graphics, and even though it's stylized, I mean, because it's stylized, it has a bunch of... It has a bunch of character to it. Every, like, when you have something so stylized, think something along the lines of Pixar and Monsters, Inc., for example. One of the main characters is just a green little snot ball with legs and arms, but there's so much character in every little movement that he does, every little twitch of his gigantic fucking eyeball, that you can't help but start to feel some sort of sympathy and some sort of relation with that character. I don't know, some people will probably be turned off by these graphics and the way everybody looks and the cartoony kind of aesthetic, but I really love this style. And again, I am really excited for this game. Even though we're not going to get the story until it's actually out of early access, I'm looking very much forward to playing this when it comes out on Tuesday. And I'm very much looking forward to playing it again once the narrative is actually complete and in the game. I'm really interested to see what these guys can do with a narrative inside a first-person survival roguelite. It's a very compelling idea, and I, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video, kind of talk about my hype for this game, and kind of let people know exactly what the game is, because I know I was really confused at first. Like, I, I really thought it was going to be something more along the lines of Bioshock, like I said at the beginning of the video here. So what about you? Are you as excited for this game as I am? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway, my name is Ingenious Clown, and if you like this video, please remember to hit that like button on your way out because it does help me out here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, please remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome gaming and we happy few content here on the channel in the future, and I will see you next time.